Back at it here on a Monday. For many people, it's the day before, the day before, the day before the weekend. If you got Thursday and Friday off, for some people, they got the whole week off, which means it's a happy weekend. And for other people who have to work the whole week, it's the day before, the day before, the day before, the day before, the day before the weekend. In any event, it's Monday. It's Thanksgiving week, the 19th day of November 2018. I'm Dan Koontz, your host. Normally, we don't guarantee a five-star show on Monday. It just doesn't make any sense. We're just we're happy to be here and to be live with uh, local entertaining television, but I'm gonna promise you a five-star show today. Got some good stuff. We still have an air stagnation advisory going on. It's chilly out there, it's 25 degrees. You'll be warming up your car and scraping your windshield this morning on your way to work. We still have that stage one burn ban. It's also uh, going on, we'll talk about that. Also, could we get a little snow this week, especially Thanksgiving night? <gasps> I kid you not. We got some light snow in the forecast. First snowfall of the season. Could very well come our way Thursday night. We even have a chance of snow Wednesday night into Thursday. Forecast details are coming up. We have your latest news on this Monday morning. Also sports out of the Wenatchee Wild do over the weekend. We'll fill you in on all the details. Of course, it's Apple Cup week. All eyes on Pullman 530 kickoff Friday afternoon. The Huskies and the Cougars will do battle. The winner will win the Pac-12 North and take on Utah for the Pac-12 championship apple cup week we're all over it uh we're gonna have a special show by the way on thursday we're not going to be here thursday we're going to pre-tape the show what it's going to consist of i don't know and uh, i'm taking friday off i'm assuming eric grantstrom will be filling in for me on friday which reminds me also friday we kick off the les schwab community toy drive the second annual les schwab community toy drive will kick off with a live remote friday morning at 9 a.m at hooked on toys we've teamed up with our friends at country 1047 kkrv and a bunch of other folks to put this together so we're really excited about that second half of the program by the way cal fitzsimmons our handsome and debonair news director interviewed diana Hagland on friday diana is the director of communications for the financial school district they're changing the way they're going to do their search for a new superintendent as brian flonis is getting ready to hang up the textbooks after 19 years at the helm. That'll happen next spring, but they've decided to do things a little differently. That conversation between Cal and Diana will come up in the second half of the program. Plus, we have the obscure holiday birthdays today in history, and everybody is entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion. Let's go around the valley on this Monday morning and see what we're looking at. We're looking at that. Most of last week, of course, our cross camera was it was not applicable. It was working fine. It just there was nothing to see because it was all fogged in and clouded in. But boy, we had a beautiful weekend and one more day of really nice weather today. Lots of sunshine, cool temperatures, but that air stagnation advisory is going to be on because the lid is going to be on. We've got some, uh, some inversions. It's going to pollute the air up a little bit, we think. That's what it looks like anyway. Beautiful shot from the uh, cross camera. That camera is located very adjacent to the cross at the very tip of Wenatchee Heights. Camera two, as decided by Cat, who by the way is back in control after a three-day weekend. That's the monitor camera, I want to say. And I am correct. Woohoo! I haven't used that one in a while. The orchards, of course, are pretty much done for the year. Just, you're just sitting there, you know, waiting to get through the winter time. You can see the Wenatchee River and uh, US 2, US 97, that camera high above the monitor area, looking out towards the Kashmir area and, of course, the Cascades in the background. You can see Mount Stewart, uh, Claire Isabel, Mount Cashmere sticking out there as well. Camera three, what do we got, cats? We got, oh, this is the Black Mountain camera quickly becoming one of our favorites. That's Leavenworth that you see right smack dab in the middle. This camera is located uh, high atop a bluff uh, above the Peshastan area. It's called Black Mountain, and that's where that tower is. It takes quite a bit of work to actually physically get to the tower, but that's the payoff, an incredible view there. And take a look at those mountains, the Cascades, because those babies are gonna be covered in snow by the time we get to the weekend. We'll get to those details in just a second. And finally, camera four is Billy Goat. Wow, that's an incredible view. We did this last week and the only thing you could see was Mount Kalispell. You can see Mount Kalispell is right in the middle of your picture. But as you can see, the Pateras and Brewster and Bridgeport area socked in with some low clouds and some fog. Uh, that happens, of course, when the air temperature is cooler than the temperature of the water. That's what happens there. But that'll be burning off once the sun gets up and going, which is starting just about now. We're about two minutes away from sunrise officially. All right, from the National Weather Service, it's a holiday week for everybody. Let's take a look at what we got in store for us today. Again, quite a bit of sunshine today. We'll warm up to around 45. Uh, yesterday's high was 42, but uh, we do have an air stagnation advisory. It's in effect until 1 o'clock Wednesday. 1 o'clock Wednesday, we've got a high pressure ridge. That means temperature inversions, and that means the pollutants get trapped much closer to the surface. Hopefully, 
it'll we'll get through this uh, by Wednesday with no time, no problems at all. Uh, it's, the air quality is supposed to be at its worst both today and tomorrow before a system comes in. And also we have a stage one burn ban that continues. That started over the weekend. All outdoor burning is prohibited. Doesn't matter really where you're at, including residential, agriculture, forest. If you have an uncertified wood stove, an uncertified fireplace, inserts, anything, uh, you can't burn it unless that's your only source of heat in your home. Of course, if you have clean burning certified wood stoves, you're good to go. And hopefully that will change as well. Probably Wednesday into Wednesday night. But here's the cool thing. I mentioned this at the start of the show. Could get a little light snow Wednesday. It's not going to stick around. There's only about a 30% chance of a rain snow mix on Wednesday. Same deal Wednesday night. 30% chance of some light snow mixed with rain. No accumulations. Thanksgiving Day, light snow maybe with a high of 41 is certainly not going to stick around. But this is when things get interesting. Thanksgiving night, uh, we're going to have rain until about 9 o'clock and then snow likely in the overnight hours, Thursday night into Friday, a 60% chance of measurable snow. We could have white stuff on the ground when you get up to hit, hit the stores shopping on Black Friday. Hmm, interesting. So best chance of rain snow mix overnight Thursday into Friday. We'll have it by the time we get to about Tuesday afternoon with an update on the weather service, we'll have a much better idea of exactly if we're going to get snow and exactly how much snow we are going to get. We can tell you right now the mountain pass is going to get snow just in time for you holiday travelers. Just take a look at your mountain passes. Right now they're fine. There's no problems at all. There are no advisories or restrictions across the board. Everybody is bare and dry with some patchy frost and ice in places. That's a live shot of I-90. Uh, Snoqualmie, as you can see, no issues at all there. Stevens Pass looks fine. No advisories, no restrictions, uh, no issues at all. Uh, the weather forecast for today through Thursday, through Tuesday night, by the way, is just fine. Stevens looks good. Blewett looks good. No issues at all. You can get up and over without any problems at all. Uh, according to the Washington State Department of Transportation, the busiest travel times, by the way, if you're traveling over the river through the woods, is Tuesday afternoon between 4 and 7. A lot of people are taking Wednesday off, and of course, almost everybody's taking both Thursday and Friday off. But here's the deal. The forecast for the mountain passes starting Wednesday, they're going to get a little bit of snow, about an inch of snow. No big deal. But Wednesday night, an 80% chance of one to three inches of snow Wednesday night in the mountain passes. If you're traveling on Thanksgiving Day proper, two to four inches of snow. It's almost guaranteed a 100% chance of snow on Thanksgiving Day. And then intermittent snow showers Thursday night through the weekend. So there you go. Thursday, especially in the mountain passes, is going to be snowy. We haven't had a traction tire advisory or restriction so far in this driving season. That can very easily change Wednesday night into Thursday. There you go. Your forecast and your past report. Eight minutes after the hour. When we come back, your Monday morning headlines. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Live this morning from Studio 4 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life Channel. Hey everyone, did you know that the NCW Life Channel is North Central Washington's go-to source for news? No matter how you prefer to view your news, NCW Life has you covered. Watch the evening news weeknights on TV, stream it, read it at ncwlife.com, or catch the latest news by following us on Facebook. Stay informed with local news, sports, weather, and shows featuring local people and events. NCW Life, a reflection and a spotlight of the communities we call home. I came here to CBCH because um, one of my friends referred me. When I met Dr. Jocelyn, she was just amazing. She connected with my son and it meant so much to me. He opens up so quickly because she just sits there and plays with him. It really is like going to see a friend. It's really great to walk into somewhere where you feel welcomed and you feel accepted and respected. It just feels like home. Welcome back to this Monday morning edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley, the 19th day of November. I am Dan Koontz. Clear skies, 25 degrees, sunshine, highs in the mid-40s with an air stagnation advisory in effect. Let's do your news. King County search and rescue crews recovered the body of a man from the Skycomish River in the Stevens Pass area. This happened late last week. The 50-year-old victim apparently slipped and fell into the river while visiting Deception Falls with his family and a church group. The King County Sheriff's Office reports the man had separated from the larger group to get a closer look at the falls. His family went to look for him when he didn't return and reportedly found his hat and jacket snagged on a tree branch about 100 feet downriver 
from the fall. Search and rescue teams were unable to locate him until Wednesday. The sheriff's office describes this death as a tragic accident. It was a come from behind victory for fire district number four's levy increase after the latest voting releases after the latest voting tabulations were released by the Douglas County Auditor's Office on Friday. The levy passed by six votes, 287 to 281. It had been trailing by 10 votes prior to Friday's count. The election will be certified, by the way, on November 27th. On a $200,000 home, the district's levy rate would rise from $117 annually to $194. It'll pay to relocate station number three into a new building, as well as pay for trucks and other firefighting equipment. The district, District 4, is based in Arondo and serves much of the surrounding area. Well, the Wenatchee School Board has decided to change the process it will use in hiring a new superintendent. Instead of a closed hiring process, it will now be open. Director of Communications Diana Haglin explains what exactly that means. Initially, our board decided that they wanted to do a closed search at the recommendation of our search consultants, um, HYA. And the reason behind doing a closed search is really to um, entice high quality candidates to come. It's a very uh, kind of private, confidential process. For a seated superintendent, um, from what we understand, it's it can be a little bit of a risk for them to put themselves out there early on in that process and to have their, their name released. Um, so the board had decided that they wanted to uh, be respectful of that confidential process and to really make sure we got a high quality pool of candidates um, through that closed process and that uh, once we got to a point where we got down to our final three that they would then um, open that up but we wouldn't have um, the level of community engagement throughout the entire process but early on and that's where some of our surveys and our stakeholder groups came in, um, but it would be closed towards the end until we got down to those final three. But what we heard uh, loud and clear from our community, from our, a variety of stakeholders, including students and staff, was it is so critical that they stay involved and engaged in this process throughout. And so at our last board meeting, um, HYA decided to make a recommendation, a strong recommendation to the board that they perhaps look at opening that up and really continuing to engage the community in the search process and allow more of an open um, style of interview so that we have some level of community engagement. And we don't quite know what that's going to look like. Um, that'll be determined at our board meeting on December 4th, I believe. And uh, so we'll have a better understanding of what, what community engagement's going to look like, if that's sitting in on interviews or, or what level of involvement that'll be. Longtime Superintendent Brian Flonis announced his retirement, of course, earlier in the year. Cal Fitzsimmons' entire conversation with Diana Haglin will air in the second half of this morning's program. The Columbia Basin Project's Efreda office will receive $7.1 million in federal funding. The announcement was made last week by the Bureau of Reclamation, which also includes allocating up to $2 million for design and oversight to the Odessa Groundwater Replacement Program. Both Dan Newhouse and Kathy McMorris Rogers praised the announcement, saying the funding is a critical investment on behalf of farmers, ranchers, and water users, and will continue to meet the water infrastructure needs of that area for the future. Well, by a vote of 196 to 80, 180 on uh, Friday, the United States House of Representatives have decided to take gray wolves off the federal endangered species list. The bill also prohibits federal judicial review of the legislation. The bill sponsors included Kathy McMorris Rogers and Representative Dan Newhouse. They claim wolves have recovered to a point that they no longer need federal protection. Opponents argue that the predator still needs protections and the law would set a dangerous precedent in which politicians make decisions best reserved for scientists. Wolves are protected by the Endangered Species Act in the western two-thirds of the state. The legislation would transfer control of the wolf protection to the states. The bill now goes on to the United States Senate. Speaking of that, the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife have announced the winners of their annual wildlife video contest. There were hundreds of entries from all over the state in all categories, hunting, fishing. Among uh, those nominated was this video from Central Washington.
You can see all of the submitted videos on the State Department of Fish and Wildlife's website. A friendly reminder, the news with Grant Olson comes your way at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock on this television station, 5, 6, and 10. Grant in the anchor chair, also with the weather forecast. I'll have an update for you to see if we may actually get some snow on Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving night. It's a possibility. Grant will handle those duties. Eric Grantstrom in the sports chair, 5, 6, and 10 on television, available for, for you to watch on demand on our website. We get it up and running right around 4.30 or 5 o'clock, so you can just go to ncwlife.com and click on and watch the evening news at your own convenience. You can also watch it via our Facebook page if you so desire. And those are two tools you can use to get a hold of us. We have the traditional tools like, you know, telephones. You can do that. Pick up the telephone and give us a call if you've got a news tip out there. You can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com, news at ncwlife.com. You can use our Facebook page. Go to our Facebook page and private message us. We'll respond to you, or if you want to, you can go to our website, ncwlife.com. Click on the Contact Us icon in the upper right-hand corner of your page, and it's down the road you go. 25 degrees, very chilly outside at about 17 minutes after they are. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we got one issue wild highlights. When we get to sports, also preview the Apple Cup, the 111th Apple Cup coming up this Friday night in Pullman. That's the big sports story all week long, of course, around here. Plus, we have the obscure holiday. Today in history, birthdays, everybody is entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion, and Cal Fitzsimmons sitting down with Diana Haglund to talk about the new superintendent search for the Menachee School District. Busy Monday, don't go anywhere. You watch Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. This is the NCW Life Community Calendar brought to you by Local Tell. Thanksgiving Day is the Foul Play 5K in downtown Leavenworth. Gather at the gazebo at 8.30 a.m. and the run starts at 9. Also happening in Leavenworth is Chris Kindle Market, a Bavarian-style Christmas market that includes entertainment, crafts, a lantern parade, Santa Claus, and more. It's happening this Friday through Sunday. For more information and other community events, visit ncwlife.com. Some people put everything into their work. They put their name on the door and their heart in the community. Some people make their lives work to carry on traditions that cross over the decades. When you shop these local businesses, you support all the things that make our community great and the money you spend stays here in the Valley. We give thanks to our sponsors who support this message. Collins Fashions in downtown Wenatchee, the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center and Clark's Jewelry on Palouse. Back at it here on a Monday, Monday. Just can't seem to trust that day. I don't know why. Let's do sports. The Wenatchee Wild were in Canada for the weekend. BCHL action. They were at Trail Friday and Salmon Arm on Saturday. In the first game, Wenatchee saw its three-game winning streak come to an end in a 3-2 loss to the Smoke Eaters. Lucas Souter and P.J. Fletcher did what they could to help the cause, but Trail was up to the challenge. Arch Ecker with a call on the Wenatchee Wild Hockey Network video, courtesy of Hockey TV. Into the corner. Herzog chips at it. Oh, and trucked his Stratton. Oh, he just got hit up high and dropped. He turned around and got plowed. Carter Jones back the other way. He's in his shot, and he scores. Where Souter will take off to the race on the right side. Nice move by Souter. He's in. He shoots. He scores. Oh, what a shot by Lucas Souter. As he turned Hayden Rowan inside out over on the right wing. Backed it away, though, by Hayden Rowan. Three on two back the other way for the Smoke Eaters. They're into the zone to Byers. He shoots and he scores. Mac Byers picking the top corner high on the blocker's side. In the back of the way, here's Snyder to Kriske. He's in, shot, save, rebound, score. Now to Arnold, down in the left corner. Arnold throws it back up high. Held in by Modry. He looks, he shoots, he scores. That may have been tipped on the way through, but Modry pulled the trigger. And I think it's Fletcher got a stick on it, and he did. Souter carries it in, cuts across to his left. High slot, leaves it for Gashevsky. His shot just low and wide. Three seconds left. Back to Cook. His shot just rattles wide. And the Smoke Eaters hang on. So that was Friday night. Saturday night's game was close. The Wild leading 2-1, to one, heading into the third period. But A.J. Hodges, second goal of the night with 48 seconds into the frame, opened up the floodgates. And Wenatchee poured in four more goals after that. No problems against Salmon on the final was 7-1. Again, to the highlights we go. Arch Ecker with the call. Video courtesy of Hockey TV. Redded back across. Stratton in up high for Sasaki. 
Back to Arnold. He looks, he shoots, he scores. A screen in front. There were two Silverback players. They were converging, and Arnold just able to sneak it through. Arnold comes away and sends the pass ahead for Hodges. He's in behind the D. Hodges in, he shoots, he scores. A.J. Hodges took off up the left side. Arnold spotted him and put it into a lane. Now over to Lucas Souter. Souter into the zone. In, shoots, he scores. It was a one-on-four rush as they were peeling off behind him on a change, and Souter just came in off the right wing for Sasaki, then ahead to Gashevsky, who tips it in. Now Gashevsky gets in behind the D. He shoots, he scores. Matt Gashevsky. Polk checked the puck away at the Salmon Arm blue line. Blake Barger sends it in. Hiroshi colliding with his teammate. Barger able to chase it down. Throws it in front. Shot and a score. Josh Arnold. His second of the night and fourth point for Hodges. Midpoint now Cook. Cook sweeps it across to Fletcher. Shoveled down low for Souter. Fluttered in front. Shot score. Brandon Cook finished it off. Off the nice feed from Souter. A.J. Hodges with a pair of goals, Josh Arnold with a pair of goals. Souter, Gashevsky, and Cook rounding out the scoring. And this one comes to a close with the Wenatchee Wild picking up the win. Good job for the Wild. They took two of three on the road trip. Now they're back home. West Kelowna will be in the big city Friday and Saturday. Town Toyota Center, both games start at 7.05. To the Les Schwab scoreboard in college football over the weekend. We'll start where the weekend began. That would be Friday. In Portland, the Eastern Washington Eagles demolished Portland State 74 to 23. Quarterback Eric Barrier throwing for five touchdowns, round for another. The Eagles shared the Big Sky Championship with UC Davis and Weber State. They all finished at 7 and 1. The FCS playoffs begin next weekend, and Eastern Washington will be a number three seed, and they get a first round bye. On Saturday, Gardner Minshew threw for seven touchdown passes, 473 yards. Washington State torched Arizona 69 to 28. Game is pretty much over at halftime. Cougars led going into the break 55 to 14. Seven touchdowns in the game, a Washington State record. In Seattle, it was senior night. Washington's Jake Browning threw for 242 yards and three touchdowns. Mile Gaskin, 135 yards and a score. Huskies beat up Oregon State 42 to 23. So here we go. It's Apple Cup time in Pullman Friday night. The Pac-12 North title is on the line just like it was two years ago. Cougars are 7-1 in conference play, 10-1 overall. Huskies, they are 6-2 uh, in conference play, 8-3 overall. Again, the winner wins the North. We'll move on to take on Utah for the Pac-12 championship game. Kickoff 5.30 Friday afternoon on Fox. By the way, the Cougars are a three-point favorite, which is the first time that's happened in a long time. It's going to be a toss-up. We'll see what happens with that. It's going to be a great game. Those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Monday morning. Let's take a look at the obscure holiday of the day today. And I know it's World Toilet Day. I know it's World Toilet Day, but this is not a laughy matter. This is a serious stuff. It's, uh, the idea, it's a UN holiday, and the idea is to bring international attention to the fact that there are 2.5 billion people on this planet that do not have access to toilets. I kid you not, 2.5 billion, that's about one out of every three people on this planet lack access to proper sanitation facilities. This has become the big cause now for Bill Gates and many other billionaires who are working on giving away all of their money to try and get these people clean water, clean, as far as they're concerned, clean water, clean food, and sanitation is a basic human right, not something that you have to go out and get. In 2013 alone, 300,000 children under the age of five died simply because they don't have access to clean sanitation water. That's about a thousand child deaths every single day. Nobody should have to do their business outdoors. World Toilet Day, no joke. Think about it for just a minute. 25 minutes after the hour. Today in history. Probably the most famous speech in American history. It's, you got to put it up there, number one. I think the Gettysburg Address was delivered by Abraham Lincoln on this date 155 years ago. Of course, it was the dedication ceremony for the Gettysburg uh, National Cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. He spoke for less than a minute. That's all he wrote. There are five known copies of the Gettysburg Address. That's the one that is actually at the Lincoln bedroom in the White House in Lincoln's own hand. The funny thing is, there's five different addresses and all of them are slightly different. Some words have been moved around, all of them written in Abe Lincoln's own hand, of course. Words were moved around, punctuation changed, a couple of things there were moved over to there. So nobody really knows exactly what it was that he said when he delivered 
the Gettysburg Address 155 years ago because all five copies have slightly different things about them. But it's one of the finest speeches this country has ever heard and it happened on this date in 1863. Well, 20 years ago today, the United States House of Representatives Judiciary Committee began impeachment hearings against U.S. President Bill Clinton. Day one lasted 13 hours and it was a nasty, nasty day for everybody. Uh, of course, the whole process would last a little over a year. Bill Clinton was impeached, of course, by the House of Representatives, but acquitted by the United States Senate, and everybody saw this coming from a mile away. But the whole process began 20 years ago today with Kenneth Starr. And 14 years ago today was the worst brawl in NBA history, maybe the worst brawl in sports history, the famous Malice at the Palace, when Ron Artest went up into the stands and started fighting the fans, Stephen Jackson, joined him. Ron Artest was suspended for the rest of the season, 86 games without pay. Stephen Jackson was suspended 30 games. Fans went onto the court and started brawling with the players. It was a nasty, ugly, terrible night in the history of the NBA. The malice in the palace happened on this date 14 years ago. And finally, we got some birthdays. Whenever we have a president, we always put him on the show. James Garfield was the 20th president of the United States, not for very long, of course. He was born in the state in 1831. Uh, he is the only sitting member of the U.S. House of Representatives to be elected President of the United States. He was elected. Uh, he was inaugurated in March of uh, 1881. In July, he got shot. In September, he died. Most people don't even put, most historians don't even put James Garfield on their list of where he ranks presidential-wise because he only served less than a year. James Garfield was born in the state in 1831. A couple of broadcasting legends celebrating birthdays today. Larry King who first came on my radar as host of the Larry King Show, that all-night radio call-in show on the mutual broadcasting system was just enjoyable as heck to watch. Of course, he also hosted Larry King Live on CNN from 1985 to 2010. Uh, Larry King is 85 years old today. Ted Turner used to be Larry King's boss. He's 80 years old today. Of course, he was the founder of CNN, TBS, TNT, Turner Classic Movies. He owns the MGM Library, the former owner of the Atlanta Braves and the Atlanta Hawks. At one time, he was the largest private landowner in the entire country. In fact, Ted Turner still has the largest privately owned continuous tract of land in the United States. It's called the Vermejo Park Ranch in New Mexico. It's 920 square miles. That's a big ranch. Ted Turner, his, his life has treated him well. He's done good. He's 80 years old today, and a couple of actresses who have a lot of awards on their mantles. Allison Janney, she is so good, won the Academy Award, of course, last year for Best Supporting Actress. Seven Primetime Emmy Awards, Golden Globe Awards, Screen After Guild Awards. She's won it all. She's a good actress, and she's 59 years old today. And Jodie Foster has two Academy Awards on her mantle, of course, a couple of Golden Globe Awards. She's now kind of transitioned over to directing. Jodie Foster is 56 years old. Today. Don't forget, if you know somebody who's celebrating a special day, an anniversary, a birthday, whatever the case may be, go to our Facebook page, our Facebook page, and private message us, and I'll do my best to get your birthday on the air, all right? 29 minutes after the hour, it's chilly, 24 degrees. At least we got sunshine outside of our studios. Quite a bit of sunshine today. Air stagnation advisory is in effect. Burn ban, stage one burn ban is in effect. We're gonna, we could have some dirty air by the time another system comes in, probably late Tuesday and washes out our skies. We're going to take a break. When we come back, everybody is entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion, one of my favorite commentaries on the way. And then Cal Fitzsimmons, our handsome and debonair news director, and his conversation with Diana Agland, the director of communications for the Menachee School District that was taped on Friday. You'll see the entire conversation coming up. You're watching Wake Up Menachee Valley on the NCW Life channel. What's your automoca emergency? It's a Frida Mocha with whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate for pita. Definitely the espresso shakes. My favorite is the mocha for pitas. A peach Red Bull. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. 
Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and Air, call Alpine Air, 662-6846. Hey folks, Carrie from Blueberry Hills. A chill is in the air and it's a perfect time for some old fashioned comfort food like our amazing Eggs Benedict, chicken fried steak, French dips, soups made from scratch, or fruit pies fresh from the oven. The crowds might be gone, but we're still here for you folks. So bring an appetite and a friend to Blueberry Hills in Manson, where you pick, you sit, you eat, and you visit. Open Wednesday through Sunday from 8 to 3, wildaboutberries.com. Thanks to the help I received at Goodwill, I have a job. I'm looking now. Thanks to Goodwill. Thank you, Goodwill. Thank, Thank you, Goodwill. Goodwill. Thank, Thank you, Goodwill. Goodwill. Thank, Thank you, Goodwill. Thank you, Goodwill. Goodwill's Employment Connection Center is a free walk-in job search assistance program designed to get you back to work. When you donate to or shop at Goodwill, you're really helping people find work. Thank you. Goodwill, there's more behind the store. Turn back the clocks and grab the ice melt. Winter weather is here. This is Corey at Rose Tractor. If you're looking for a reliable way to clear snow, look no further than Cub Cadet. For sidewalks and driveways, a Cub Cadet snow thrower will get the job done in a jiffy. For larger jobs, a Cub Cadet Challenger utility vehicle with a snow blade will handle about anything. You can depend on Cub Cadet for years of reliable performance, and we'll help you select the best model for your job at Rose Tractor, family-run business at the corner of 3rd and Rock Island Road in East Wenatchee. NCW Life Channel is proud to present the Spotlight on Business. We're going behind the scenes to bring you the story of local businesses throughout North Central Washington. How did they get started and why are they so successful? We'll answer these and other questions each week with Spotlight on Business, Sundays through Fridays on the NCW Life Channel. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, some time ago, some gal on American Idol, I'm not going to mention her name, but she covered a Janis Joplin song, Peace of My Heart. Listen, you don't cover Janis Joplin. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little emotional here, but this board is on sacrilege, especially covering Janis's signature number. I mean, have a little respect. It'd be like the New York Yankees assigning Babe Ruth's retired number, number three, to some rookie. Or, God forbid, putting fruit on pizza. Covering a Janis Joplin song, Peace of My Heart. I don't care how good of a singer you think you are. There's some places you just don't go. Now, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. This is the NCW Life Community Calendar brought to you by Localtel. Pipus Public Market is turning on their holiday Christmas tree lights this Friday at 5.45 p.m. sharp. Watch the concourse be instantly turned into a festive holiday spectacle. The Wenatchee Public Library will be hosting a spelling bee for adults this Saturday from 7 to 9.30 p.m. Register online for this free event. For more information and other community events, visit ncwlife.com. Life is about memories and lasting impressions. With Boswell's expansive two-story showroom of quality home furnishings, you'll find everything you need to create a home to remember. Need assistance? From fabric options and complimentary design service to complete home makeovers, Glenn, Buffy, and Teresa are there to guide you. Come into Boswell's and find inspiration and comfort for every room in your home. Boswell's on Easy Street. It's closer than you think. Some people put everything into their work. They put their name on the door and their heart into the community. Some people make it their lives work to carry on traditions that cross over the decades. When you shop these local businesses, you support all the things that make our community great and the money you spend stays here in the Valley. We give thanks to the sponsors who support this message. Chris Kringle in Leavenworth, Praise Fruit Barn on Highway 2 and Liberty Orchards in Kashmir. It's estimated that one-third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. 
They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let D.A. Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. You don't want to see this happen. It's the oil light on your car. Oil is the lube of life for your car's engine. At Alignment Pros and Express Lube, they pour the best oil your car deserves. Expect fast, friendly, superior service in a clean environment. They'll change your oil and perform a 21-point inspection while you enjoy the comfort of their amazing waiting room. Keep your car in top shape at Alignment Pros and Express Lube in East Wenatchee. Welcome back to this Monday edition of Wake Up Financial Valley. I am Dan Coons. On Friday morning, Diana Haglin, the Communications Director for the Financial School District, paid a visit to this very studio and she sat down with our News Director, Cal Fitzsimmons, to talk all things Financial School District. Specifically, how uh, the school board has decided to change the way they're going to run the hiring process to replace retiring Superintendent Brian Flonis. That conversation now on the NCW Live channel. Hi, I'm with Diana Haglin, Communications Director with the Wenatchee School District, and there's a lot going on in the school district, but first of all, I think the last time I saw you, you were working uh, Wenatchee Learns. I was, yeah. Well, congratulations on your new position. Uh, thank you, and I, I still have um, Wenatchee Learns as part of my role as well, because it's so much of community engagement really fits well with the communications role. Well, you've become so important that Dan's not worthy of interviewing you anymore, <laughs> so you get me. <laughs> You said it, not me. No, I'm well, just teasing. <laughs> I think it's common knowledge. But anyway, um, lots going on in the school district. There is. You know, on, on any given day, there's a ton going on in the Wenatchee School District. Um, but right now, we're in the midst of the superintendent search. And so uh, that's really um, big news that's happening right now. And there's been a lot of community engagement and outreach that's been happening um, as part of that really high-profile search. And just this week, the board decided to go from a closed process to an open process on the hiring. What does that mean exactly? So what that means is um, initially our board decided that they wanted to do a closed search at the recommendation of our search consultants, um, HYA. And the reason behind doing a closed search is really to um, entice high quality candidates to come. It's a very uh, kind of private, confidential process. For a seated superintendent, um, from what we understand, it's, it can be a little bit of a risk for them to put themselves out there early on in that process and to have their, their name released. Um, so the board had decided that they wanted to uh, be respectful of that confidential process and to really make sure we got a high quality pool of candidates um, through that closed process and that uh, once we got to a point where we got down to our final three that they would then um, open that up, but we wouldn't have um, the level of community engagement throughout the entire process, but early on, and that's where some of our surveys and our stakeholder groups came in, um, but it would be closed towards the end until we got down to those final three. But what we heard uh, loud and clear from our community, from our, a variety of stakeholders, including students and staff, was it is so critical that they stay involved and engaged in this process throughout. And so at our last board meeting, um, HYA decided to make a recommendation, a strong recommendation to the board that they perhaps look at opening that up and really continuing to engage the community in the search process and allow more of an open um, style of interview so that we have some level of community engagement. And we don't quite know what that's gonna look like. Um, that'll be determined at our board meeting on December 4th, I believe. And uh, so we'll have a better understanding of what, what community engagement's gonna look like, if that's sitting in on interviews or, or what level of involvement that'll be. So a closed process, uh, the original plan, mm -hmm. had the candidates coming in, the final three, they were not gonna be unknown to the public. Uh, at the beginning. Now we're going to have presumably more knowledge on who's applied and where they're at in the process? So there will be still a level of confidentiality. What will happen is um, HYA will present a slate of six candidates for the board to consider. They will do um, first and second round of interviews and at, th at that time we'll figure out how do uh, community members in, are involved in that process, whether we create an advisory 
uh, made up of stakeholders that will observe interviews, will hold their own interviews, will have an open forum. Um, we haven't yet decided what that formula is going to look like, and that's the discussion that's going to be happening at our December meeting. Why do you think there's so much interest in the hiring of a Wenatchee School District Superintendent at this time? Um, you know, we've had the same superintendent, Mr. Brian Flones, for 19 years. That is absolutely unheard of uh, in the state and in the nation, so that's a, a really unique opportunity. I think there's a high profile right now, specifically because um, Brian has been such a beloved superintendent. Everybody's anxious to find out, you know, who is going to, to come after Brian and really take the reins of the district. So I, I think there's a heightened um, interest in the superintendent search. And it's a really high profile job here in our valley and Brian's done a tremendous job in um, leading our district. So I think that transition really has people interested. Um, you know, there has been some uh, discourse in our board, you know, that is a known fact. And I think a lot of people are paying attention to the work that's being done by the board and how they're leading the district. And so I think that definitely lends itself to people paying closer attention. The benefit of that is people are paying attention to this and they want to be involved. Um, and we do want to continue to keep them engaged in that process because this is their superintendent uh, as much as it is ours as, as staff and, and for our kids. Let's talk a little bit about that discord on the board. Um, Last year, three new board members were elected. Uh, the sitting board members, that left two sitting board members, and they were um, out on the outs a bit with the rest of the, uh, the new members, and there were policy changes that allowed the new members to take over leadership positions. Is that still, I mean, is it reaching a level of dysfunction? You know, I think there's definitely some challenges um, that the board faces right now. There, um, definitely at, at board meetings you can get a sense that uh, there's not always consensus on things. That's not always a bad situation to be in. Uh, they're looking critically at matters. But I do think it affects um, the board's ability to uh, move quickly on some things. There's a lot more discussion that needs to happen. Um, so it definitely is a factor, but uh, they're working through it as best they can. Um, we have had a bit of a change too on our board uh, as of yesterday. Dr. Walter Newman announced his resignation as well. So there'll be some transition that's gonna be happening um, on the board. With that position, we'll be looking at appointing a, a new member to the board, which will create a, definitely a new dynamic as well. And that new dynamic would include the fact that Dr. Newman was one of the two that were left on the board when the other three came on. And now the board will appoint a replacement for him, presumably someone more along their line of thinking when it comes to school board? Well, the process for selecting a new board member will include an application, so we'll open that up. Uh, anybody that comes forward will be considered in that process. So ultimately, the decision is up to the, the current board members of who they'll tap for replacing Dr. Newman's position, but there will be an application process and an interview phase. Um, and we hope that there's gonna be some community members who step forward and throw their hat in the ring who um, want to take over that position and really make a difference on the board. And how do people go about applying to be a member of the school board? We'll release that information uh, after our, our board meeting on November 27th. So the board will get together, they'll accept Dr. Newman's official resignation, and then at that time they'll put in motion the process for um, selecting the next um, person to fill that uh, number two position. So that could be a paper application that they need to fill out, uh, but there will be a process that will be released and we will make that very public so that the community knows what the steps are in that process and how they can go about applying. Have they expressed at all the when they would hope to have a new board member? Not at this time. Um, our board has actually been at a conference um, while this news was breaking, so we haven't had a chance to really sit down and talk about that. My presumption would be that they want to act quickly because we are in the midst of the superintendent search and we want to keep our timeline, which is very aggressive. Uh, we're looking at doing interviews, at least the first round of interviews in late January. So we want to make sure that we're maintaining those timelines, but um, also we need to make sure that we have a full board in order to do so. My understanding is Dr. Newman's resignation letter didn't specify why he was leaving the board, but um, 
Do you have a sense for that yourself? You know, Dr. Newman thanked us for uh, his service and we thank him for his service. He's been a tremendous asset for our district, for our community. Um, he was a beloved pediatrician uh, and really carried on uh, a level of integrity being on our board. So it was, he, he really didn't specify why, he just simply thanked us and um, it was his time to be done and he's handing that baton off to somebody else and we look forward to who that next person's gonna be. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the survey that your yeah. hiring consultants did. Mm -hmm. um, there seemed to be a, a disconnect between what the board thought the district was, how the board, how the board thought the district was doing and how most of the other people who responded thought. Um, if, if you could look at, uh, for example, clear and, is there a clear and compelling uh, vision for the future? Only 14% of the board members agreed with that or strongly agreed. Um, and when it came to is the district headed in the right direction, 43% uh, overall said that it was, and only 14% of the board once again. Um, what do you make of that? You know, I think our board looks really critically at um, our direction, our, our vision, and, and where we're going. Of course, right now at a time of transition, uh, when this survey was taken uh, with the loss of uh, Superintendent Flonas at the end of this school year, uh, perhaps it maybe does feel like we, we don't have that solid vision yet and we're waiting for uh, that next leader to come forward and really help create that. Um, we do have many new board members who also weren't part of that initial visioning process through the Wenatchee Learns community conversation that we had. Uh, and may feel that it's time to refresh that vision and so that may be reflected in that data. Is there anything else about the survey that um, caught you by surprise or you found particularly interesting? You know, um, what I found particularly interesting was the number of people that took it in a short period of time. One of my concerns early on as the communications director was gosh, we're not going to give people enough time to really sit down and take this survey. But we really did have what I would consider an overwhelming um, turnout very, very, very quickly from our stakeholder groups. We had um, 920 people complete the online survey in a variety of different stakeholder groups. 34% um, of our stakeholders that completed it were parents in our district. So I think that's really telling that um, they're paying attention and they wanted to provide their feedback. So for me, the numbers were important. Um, a quarter of the people that took the survey to was our staff. So they really wanted to make sure that their voice was heard and that that was captured in the survey data. Do you know why those questions were asked? I mean, the purpose of mm -hmm. the survey was to find out what people wanted in a new superintendent, correct? Well, the survey was really twofold. So part of it was to determine what were some of the leadership qualities, both personal and professional, that we wanted to see in our next superintendent. The other purpose was to really get a sense of people's perceptions about the district. How are we doing? What things can we improve on? And really identify some of the challenges and opportunities that the next superintendent's going to face. And they take, uh, HYA takes both sets of information, the, again, that, that profile, kind of who we're looking for and what those characteristics are, and then also um, what those strengths and weaknesses potentially are in our district. So they can share that out with candidates that are looking at applying for this position. So they have a really clear picture of what's happening in the district, what the position's going to entail, um, what's going to maybe be in their, uh, their inbox the first couple of days or the first several months or even the first year um, while they're tenured with us. Um, so they, they really do have that transparent process for candidates that are looking at the position. So they get a better sense of what it's like here. I, I think another thing that comes out of the survey is um, what people value. So what things are we doing exceptionally well? Um, and that's, I think that's a great thing to have at any time for a school district is just to have a sense of how people feel about your district. What are you doing well? But also, you know, what are some areas of improvement? So regardless of, of uh, being in the midst of a superintendent search, this is really valuable data, I think, for us uh, as a whole. And is the advertising process for the new superintendent already underway? So the advertising process is underway. HYA uh, is carrying out what the board has chosen in terms of an advertising package. It is a national search, so we are looking across the country for our next uh, seated superintendent. 
Um, they're, they're also advertising in some specific journals. Um, one of the priorities of our board was to really go after somebody that represents uh, diversity, whether that be a female or somebody um, from a different ethnic background. So they are making sure they're casting a very wide net uh, and we'll see what kind of applicants we get. So we are concentrating in the Northwest as well as California, and um, we're hopeful that that, that wide net casting will um, get us a great slate of candidates for the next superintendent. Do you have a sense yet for how many people have applied? I don't. I don't have that information yet, but uh, our consultants are working very hard to, again, get that position out there. They feel strongly that this is a very desirable place to live and a very um, kind of ideal size of a community that we will likely see some very high quality candidates that have an interest in uh, applying for this position. And do you have a sense of whether internal candidates will come forward, someone in the district already? You know what's interesting, so going back to that survey, one of the questions that is asked is, do you have someone you would, somebody you would recommend for the next superintendent? And there were a lot of names that were issued. Um, some were internal staff, some were people we've never heard of, some were, <laughs> I mean, you name it. Uh, and HYA really does make an effort to contact each one of those folks and talk to them and say, hey, somebody recommended you to be the next superintendent. Um, are you interested in applying? And here's the information for you to do so. So I thought that was a really uh, unique spin to uh, to the survey and they they certainly um, are looking for people to make those recommendations I suspect that there there will be some candidates internally that uh, will look at the position whether they apply what is uh, really yet to be determined okay well thank you very much for coming on today Diana and we'll look forward to finding out more about what an open search means as the board goes forward and as we have more information we'll um, continue to share that out with you all right thank you you're welcome Some people put everything into their work. They put their name on the door and their heart into the community. Some people make it their lives work to carry on traditions that cross over the decades. When you shop these local businesses, you support all the things that make our community great and the money you spend stays here in the Valley. We give thanks to the sponsors who support this message. Chris Kringle in Leavenworth, Praise Fruit Barn on Highway 2 and Liberty Orchards in Cashmere. Hey everyone, Fletcher and Amy Ellington here from Live It Up. In the investment world, ROI stands for Return on Investment. Well, how does better health, better wealth, and better relationships sound for ROI? Join us every week right here on NCW Life and learn how to invest in the most important asset, you. We're going to answer your questions and provide some weekly inspiration so you can create a life that you love. Join us on Live It Up. Hey everyone, did you know that the NCW Life channel is North Central Washington's go-to source for news? No matter how you prefer to view your news, NCW Life has you covered. Watch the evening news weeknights on TV, stream it, read it at ncwlife.com, or catch the latest news by following us on Facebook. Stay informed with local news, sports, weather, and shows featuring local people and events. NCW Life, a reflection and a spotlight of the communities we call home. Some people put everything into their work. They put their name on the door and their heart in the community. Some people make their lives work to carry on traditions that cross over the decades. When you shop these local businesses, you support all the things that make our community great and the money you spend stays here in the Valley. We give thanks to our sponsors who support this message. Collins Fashions in downtown Wenatchee, the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center and Clark's Jewelry on Palouse. Hey, welcome back to this Monday edition of Wake Up in Angie Valley. Dan Koontz alongside senior news correspondent Steve Hare. Hats off to Cal Fitzsimmons, our, the handsome and debonair news director. Not only did he conduct a wonderful interview with Diana, but he just came into the station about 10 minutes ago and he gave right. me a quick weather update. 
He comes in, he takes off his jacket, he said, he said, Dan, it's cold. It's cold. It's cold. You, oh, can't, boy. you can't get anything by a cow. I'll tell you, it is uh, starting to look a lot like winter out there. It's beginning to look a lot. 27 degrees outside of our studios with clear skies. Steve and I have a few things to talk about. Let's real quickly do the forecast because we still have an air stagnation advisor. It's in effect until 1 o'clock on Wednesday. There you go. That's what we're looking at. So we got uh, high pressure is large and in charge, and that means all those pollutants get trapped near the surface. And that means an inversion, and that means air stagnation. That it's means a combination. A burn ban. Yeah, and we got that stage one burn ban, which has been going on since Saturday. And that does not have an expiration date. The air stagnation advisory does. It's like that old can of sour cream you got in the back of the fridge. <laughs> it's going to expire at one o'clock on Wednesday. I bring that up because I found one over the weekend. Oh. Whoo, baby, that stank up the place. <laughs> the stage one burn ban by the Department of Ecology does not have an expiration date. Basically, if you have an uncertified wood stove fireplace insert, if it's uncertified, you can't use it unless it's your only source of heat for your home. And of course, all outdoor burning, regardless of what it is, leaves, forests, junk, whatever, you can't burn anything outside until the stage one burn ban uh, goes, uh, goes away, which hopefully will go away when the air stagnation advisory goes away. I want to once again point out Thanksgiving night, Steve, Thanksgiving night. Thursday have some snow. night, you're meaning? Thursday night, we okay. could have some snow. We're talking overnight. Okay. Talking about 11 o'clock midnight, Thursday night into Friday. Uh, when you get up Friday morning to do your Black Friday shopping, there could be some snow on the ground. They say snow likely after 11, uh, before 6 or so. They're not saying how much uh, snow we're going to get, but they say a 60% chance of measurable snow on Thanksgiving night. And that also happens to be in line with the scheduled opening of Mission Ridge. There you go. So we could even could get some a... light snow, by the way, Wednesday, Wednesday night. None of this snow is supposed to stick around. We'll make that perfectly clear. It's, 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 it's just a little taste of it. Keep in mind now, a year ago at this time, we did have snow on yes, the ground. Yes, we did. I remember so, that. So, you know, you gotta, you got to take things with a grain of salt. Uh, mountain passes, by the way, no problems at all today or tomorrow. These are live shots of I-90. While you look at these, and you'll see that you got no issues at all, I want to give you the past report weather forecast because that's another story altogether. Starting Wednesday, they're going get to get some snow. About an inch of snow is expected on Wednesday. That's a big travel day, Steve. Mm -hmm. Wednesday night, one to three inches of snow. Thanksgiving day in the Cascades, two to four inches of snow, and then intermittent snow Thursday night through the rest of the weekend. The Washington State Department of Transportation says the bu busiest travel time period is tomorrow afternoon, Tuesday afternoon, from 4 o'clock to about 7 o'clock, wherever you happen to be going. So they expect all the major highways across our state to be very, very busy. And it doesn't look like you're not going to have any problems at all Tuesday or Tuesday night. They're not expecting any kind of snow until Wednesday and even then just a little bit, but quite a bit of snow Wednesday night and it's certainly on Thanksgiving Day. So just a heads up on that. Get the plows and blowers ready. Yes. So Heading we'll, into winter. We'll see what happens. You know, we'll know a lot more in about 48 hours. So you'll want to tune into Wednesday's edition of this program and we'll give you a very accurate idea of what we're looking at as far as the passes and the weather is concerned. Because it could change. This time of the year, of course, it can very easily change in a matter of hours. They could change their mind. But right now, that's, that's what it's looking at. Mm -hmm. um, you saw the interview that Cal did with Diana. There's a little postscript to that. Of course, Dr. Walter Newman announced his uh, resignation for the Wenatchee School District Board effective next meeting immediately, essentially. So now that process begins to replace him. It does, it does. The full board has to, uh, of course, accept the resignation, and that's going to occur, I believe, at their uh, meeting on the 27th. At that point, they're going to discuss the process for selecting a new uh, interim uh, board member to fill out the unexpired term, uh, certainly of Mr. Newman, or Dr. Newman. So uh, that's where that stands right now at this point. Uh, I know that Initially, they had uh, posted uh, a notice of uh, calling for applications uh, for possible board members. That has since been pulled from the website. Okay. And as we understand, <coughs> the board will be taking up full consideration of uh, that vacant vacancy on the board at their 27th meeting. Yeah, I suppose you can't, you can't advertise for a job that isn't technically vacant yet, I there guess. That might be the way to do that. And there's a process. So, yeah, there is a process. If you're interested, by the way, the three things you have to be is a United States citizen, a registered voter, and you have to live within the confines of the Wenatchee School District. And if you don't know if you do that or not, just go to their website because they have an actual map of the school That's district. Right. Steve, have, have yourself a good day. Let's go you out too. and uh, have a good stuff, all right? You too. Uh, Street Talk and other stuff with Mike Mad Dog Mandati is on the way here in just a little bit. Everybody have yourself a great Monday. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.